So I've been doing some classes and toying around with SQL Server a bit. I've always been into databases for a long time. So as I take coursework, I, I, you know, I like to kind of test out some new skills with this, with, with a database that I built. Most courses, when you take a course in, in databases, a sample database is inevitably something like Northwind or, you know, it's, it's customers and orders and line orders. That's fine. Employee ID. But I thought we'd do something a little bit different, and I've been in the education field. So let's put together a school database. Now, just, you know, this is, you know, mimic something that you, like, you might see in a college. Again, this is nowhere near anything that would be actually be put into production. Uh, there are constraints that need to be put in. There are a lot of functionality that's missing. Let me just uh, introduce you to the database real quick. Uh, again, it's nothing fancy. You know, we, we could have a... We can, I can go really overboard with the tables here. I have courses, obviously, course ID is a number, and we have subject, the course number like you'd find in a catalog and the course name. Each course has a prerequisite, possibly more than one, so that's why I have a prerequisite ID. Um, course ID could be in there more than once. I didn't want to set course ID as, as a primary key because one course could have, se have several prerequisites. Well, so the, the, there are quarters, and then there are the courses themselves. So courses relates to the course ID in enrollment, and quarter, the idea of a particular quarter, like three would be, I think, spring 19 or spring 18, something like that. Anyway, quarter ID. Then, of course, you have the students. Uh, you could ignore the name set. I, that's, that's a leftover. I have a, a website that automatically, or use a website, not my website. I use a website that automatically generates uh, information. So th this is randomly generated fictitious information, and you can choose the name set, you know, so I... That's, that's a leftover from that process. I can probably get rid of that. But first name, last name, birthday, age, social security number, student number, and ID. I, the ID as the, um, so the idea is student number is like what, you know, it used to be in my day it was social security number was your student ID. Now they have a separate number. So this is kind of like your, uh, the, this is the, the actual auto-generate. ID is the one that's actually going to be auto-generated. Uh, student number is still unique. I'm not sure if I have an index on it. Uh, so basically what I have here is a bunch of stored procedures. I'm going to start with a function. A function to get a student's transcript. All right, so it's, a, it's your basic select. Um, you know, I do some things like quarter name. This is actually putting together the subject, course number, and course name. And so I just kind of concatenate it into one field. So as course. And, you know, from enrollment E, interjoin students, interjoin courses, interjoin quarter. Again, uh, that quarter should probably be in, in brackets, uh, but it does work. Uh, and so we can create this. I think it's already in there. So I, that's why the drop if exists. And then we can test it. Um, we're going to test student, we're going to, uh, the the, the input returns a table, uh, but the input is a student ID. So student ID 1500, we'll test with that. And we see this person doesn't have, I mean, that's their transcript. There's not much in there, but that's the idea. Uh, example number two. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this function. We're going to do a cross apply. So what I want to do, we're going we're gonna to run this Enroll, um, we're going to run the uh, transcript function, the entire student table, but only for students who are currently enrolled for winter 2019 quarter, I think, who, who are only for students who are currently enrolled. I think I have quarter number quarter number five in this instead. I, mean, I, I updated some of the data since since I wrote the description. but uh, So I only want students who are enrolled in quarter number five. If, if their ID is in this, we're going to cross-apply the get transcript function. So let's see how that works. And now, again, this is everyone. And again, it, it's showing multiple quarters. Remember, remember that that's because I'm getting the entire transcript. So this is, you know, one student, multiple quarters. I mean, so the question is, are they enrolled in quarter number five? We're not only record, calling quarter number five students. So that, that's okay. So that's basically the function. I want to take through some stored procedures. And I put stored procedures here for various tasks. Uh, let's scroll back at the top here. Uh, student overload. I want to find if there are students who are above a particular course limit. So we're going to, again, we're going to select the students, uh, interjoin enrollment in courses, and again, where students, where the student, we're going to select for, from students, where the student ID is in this inner query, in the subquery, and having count, so we're, we're going to group by student ID, having count student ID greater than whatever limit it is. 
and of course the, the quarter will be the another. So basically, select students from a given quarter where they have more than a certain number of classes, take those SIDs, and then we're going to take, uh, we're going to use this to, uh, the outer query to get their, uh, to get their information. So I, I think, I don't need to run this because the stored procedure is already in there. So we'll just test it. And again, it's, it, it's, it's saying these students, and you can see, I'm, actually, what, what did I run it with? Uh, quarter number, uh, the limit is four, ha having more than four classes in quarter number three. Okay, this is what, what I often like to do to, to auto-populate a table, because, you know, when I'm testing, we want to be able to generate random, not necessarily random data, but we want to auto-populate. So, um, I create this procedure to randomly enroll, um, students in a particular class. So we're going to import a course ID and a quarter, and then num key, first name key, last name key, again. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass this information in, select, we're going to insert into enrollment, and we're going to, in, we're going to insert, we're going to select the course ID, ID and quarter from students, and this is the key here, where student number is like, meets some pattern, and the last name is some, either the last name or first name meets some respective pattern too. Again, it's a way of just testing. So let's just put a uh, student number has um, has a seven in it. The last name uh, has the the st, and first name like first name has a d in it. Again, this this is not part of the procedure. I just do this. I I, I want to get an idea. 117 rows. Okay, so I'm not gonna have a class that's overfilled. That's the whole point of doing this. This is not even part of the procedure. But I'm, this this tells me how many students I'm about to enroll. Not so I don't enroll the entire database accidentally. So 117. So I'm just gonna take that inf that same uh, information and copy it over here. Maybe someday I'll come up with a more innovative way of doing this. But so we're gonna run the stored procedure, and we're gonna enroll students. I think this is actually calculus quarter number four, uh, who meet that random pattern that we just, I don't think there's currently uh, anyone in four, so that would be, this would be a good way to test it. Okay, and these, these are the students we just enrolled, so we, we know that works. Get the transcript for a given student and a quarter. So this one's a little more sophisticated, but um, uh, we're going to, input the student ID and a quarter. If we want to get the full transcript, regardless of quarter, we're going to use zero. This means any quarter. Uh, so in this case, you know, we're just going to select the information from enrollment E. We're going to interjoin the students, interjoin the courses. And I'm not going to bother selecting a quarter because we're selecting all of them. But if a quarter is selected, it's basically the same, except now we have this difference here. And quarter equals that quarter. So again, I'm not going to run the code because that, that, that procedure's already in there. Um, and again, in case it's not, I have the drop procedure if it exists. But let's actually run this. Um, and then, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this procedure on 10 randomly selected students. So basically, um, I declared SID, student ID is an integer, and I'm going to set a random number. Uh, I know that this is, will give me a student that's actually in the table. Tested that. And then we're going to execute, we're going to get the transcript ID for that student. Actually, you know, let's, let's, before we even do that, let's just, uh, let's, uh, one, 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 fifth, one, one, five for quarter number three, just to kind of run it as a standalone first. Okay. And so we ran, basically we got the term three for that one student. If I change this to zero, I get his entire, so I get his quarter three and quarter five. Um, but now we're going to select random students, and then we're, SID, while counter is less than 10, so we're going to do this 10 times, set this the SID to a random, a random value, and then we're going to execute the stored procedure with that random value, quarter number three, and then, of course, we're going to counter equal one. So I think we can do all of that. And basically, so we just selected 10 randoms. So we've run this 10 times and found the quarter three. This one's not enrolled in quarter three, I guess. Uh, 
but uh, it's, it's a real student, just they're not enrolled in quarter three. Again, uh, I think we did this already. Any quarter, I think I put, this was just a test query I put in there, so it's not part of the procedure. Oh, I want to find all the prerequisites. So select from courses where course ID in, and then we're going to select prerequisites where course ID is equal to the course ID that we pass in. So we're going to find all of the course's prerequisites. Uh, I'm going to test that on find prerequisites 902. Um, what is course 902? Just curious. Course ID 902 is Jedi Trial Seminar. Okay, so that should be intro to the Force 1, intro to the Force 2. It's probably um, the one we're going to use. And there you go. So the, these are prerequisites before you take the Jedi Trials Seminar. We could try something um, for what Course 12 is. I think that's uh, Algebra, I think. Algebra, oh, okay, maybe that's pre-calculus. You have to take Algebra 2. Okay, that's the idea. I'm going to put 902 back in here. Okay. Who was not yet enrolled? So we're going to use the school database. Again, drop if exists. And what I want to do is I want to select from students left join enrollment where that student ID is not in the enrollment table for that quarter. Order by student name. Who's not enrolled for quarter number three? A lot. Uh, I want to say who's not enrolled yet in quarter number five. Again, okay, oh, I don't want to execute the whole thing. Again, all right, so that should probably be a set dis, uh, select distinct, probably. But um, I'm going to put that in there right now. Um, oh, this is this is the last one. It's a, kind of a grand finale here. I, I So... Speaking of generating test data, right now, if we look at enrollment for quarter three, did I close that? No. Okay, so there actually are grades in quarter three. We got to clear that first. Um, but what, basically what we're doing here, again, it's a long procedure. Um, the start, we're going to generate random grades for everyone in that quarter, every student enrolled in that quarter. Basically, what, what we're doing is I want to set the, the minimum and maximum enrollment IDs for students who are actually enrolled in that quarter. And now what we're going to do is, again, we're going to set up another loop here. We're going to update enrollment, set the grade, and this is, we're going to generate a random GPA, one decimal place. Um, it's going to be random GPA from 0 to 4 following basically a cer certain standard deviation and mean. So we'll set this, we can set for an average of 2.6 and deviation of, of, of 0.8, um, where enrollment ID equals I and quarter equals quarter. And then, of course, we, re we go to the next part in the loop. Uh, the last part of this is just in case we get anything that's over 4 or less or negative, we'll say, well, if grade is less than one, we'll set it to zero. If it's greater than four, we'll set it to four. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of set this up by resetting. So we can go... Where was it? Okay, so right now, we just saw this, but now all the grades are null. So the grades are null. And now I'm going to set, that's for quarter three, I'm going to set to an average of 2.6 and a standard deviation of 0.8. And it's going to go through, it's going to go through all those student, all those um, uh, enrollment rows. And execute. That one's a slow one. But if we go back to enrollment, oh, you know what? Because I put quarter four. Let's try. I thought I had this in a different window. Okay. So let's, let's actually uh, I'll run this one more time just to make sure. We're going to just set them all to null. Okay, and then we'll run the procedure. Ah, there it is. I'll run the procedure again. Let me go back. I have to refresh. 
and now we have random grades put in. So it's just a way of generating test data to make sure. And again, there's a lot of things we can put in here, a GPA calculator, some checks to make sure that uh, I, it's not when you're enrolling, it's not currently enforcing the prerequisites. So there's a lot of stuff that can be put in here, but uh, all right, thanks for watching.